to look at it. It's Bruno on MB where it all can't be all serious. Did I get that right? Probably not. It's only my tagline. But I am uh, I'm here with E Platforms one and only Chris Eater. Chris, how are you doing today? Doing well, Bruno. Thanks for having me on today. Listen, uh the thumbnail, we get right to business. AI sales chat. AI sales chat it is. So tell tell the world what that even means. Yeah. So um real quick, ePlatform is a marketing CRM software. And the driver for our success lately has been the explosion of AI used in business, specifically to communication. So our developers have built some amazing features in our software that uh, has AI driving conversations on website chats, text message, AI conversations, following up with leads, answering questions, and even helping close more deals for our clients using our AI chat systems. So what, what does that exactly mean? I, I, you know, listen, our audience is pretty sophisticated. Just want to make sure that we're on the same page. AI sales chat. So is that just like when you go on a website or a landing page or something and they go, give me more information on the 2024 Nissan kicks and the little lady comes up and what are you looking for? Right? So how does that help a small, medium sized business? I guess. Yeah, exactly. I think it's good to kind of like, uh, take a step back to a few years ago. Remember chat widgets on a website, super simple. Um, you'd ask a question and maybe you wouldn't really get the most accurate information and a little bit frustrating because it always didn't work out every time. But now with the explosion of OpenAI's chat GPT, I'm sure everyone or most people have heard of that so far. Uh, it's been a blessing in the marketing scene for having conversations that are just intelligent, people getting answers to their questions in a way that they're looking for. Um, so yes, this chat goes on our clients' websites. Their leads can get a simple question answered immediately, intelligently, helping them guide them down the sales process to the next steps in a really efficient way. So, you know, I, I'm thinking that like you're, you have a young, really young son. Doesn't pat, you know, talk back to you. You should maybe formulate an AI family chat, so that when you're talking to somebody in your family, you get nice chat backs, never confrontational or anything like that, uh, because that's really what's happening. Is I saw one of your demos in all seriousness, and I was quite impressed with the quick way that your, I guess your bot can learn. Uh, as long as you have some information, right? So that, that could work for kids too. Hello, son. Hello, dad. I can There's see all the so things many you've applications done for me. to it, Bruno. There's so <laughs> many applications to it. You know what? I bet someone has already already played around and tinkered with that. Um, but uh, I mean, hey, I, I obsess over how to get the average business owner from point A to point B and closing more deals. But using it in your family for that type of situation, I'm sure someone's tried. Well, we'll we'll uh, we'll rename each kid bot child one, bot child two. They'll never talk back to you. But <laughs> you know what? Kid. It'll uh, being Italian descent, it will put the uh, the flying slipper industry out of uh, out of business because that's what you know all our parents used to get our attention with, right? And we wouldn't miss. So, um, but what what has that done to your business? Like you're in the CRM slash business automation business. So, what has that allowed you to do for your clients? Um, so number one, more leads. We okay. have seen uh, a, a minimum of 50% more leads in our clients' accounts because they've been having this uh, AI sales chat implemented into their business. Um, so it's a way that they're getting more um, from website visitors. They're getting more names, emails, cell phone numbers of people that are interested in having conversations about their their um, programs, products, and services when they come to their website with a quick question. Uh, looking for uh, an answer. They've been seeing more leads from it that way. Um, call times have been reduced by upwards of 70%. Actually, I've been, I, I, I read an article, I think it was by Forbes um, last week that they ran some surveys and they were seeing some staggering, staggering numbers. Even, even reduction of cost to sale by upwards of 60%, which is just huge because like, 
there's only so much time in the day. We're only human, right? So to have someone, a human being, there in the chair communicating online conversationally with the website or texting or emailing, it takes time, right? But with AI nowadays and the advancements of it that it actually works, there's been some really fantastic results coming out of it for, for my clients and almost any business that have been dabbling with it these days. The, the one thing I, I've noticed with the AI business, and I've been around soccer a little too long, is um, you get the flavor of the month all the time, right? And way back before you even remember, it was e-commerce, 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 right? And uh, online stores and online merchants. And then you had, you know, just recently, you know, the SaaS, you know, it's a SaaS. This is a SaaS, an app, you know, when the iPhones came out. And now I think we're being inundated with AI, AI, AI. And I'm one that I don't really get too excited when I hear, oh, it's an AI thing. But I do get excited when I see an application like yours that you can actually customize the, call it the bot, to respond almost in a better way that you would respond. You might want to give that example that you gave me. It was a great example because it's true. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, like like nowadays, like AI, it's not, it's not an if anymore. It's a when with these small businesses. It's going to be happening. Uh, this report I was reading last week, um, 75% of B2B businesses are going to be AI guided in some way, shape or form mm -hmm. by, by just having better selling solutions by 2025. And that was really, really eye opening to me and having the customizations to it, to have the bot really um, learn about a business, know how to articulate its value proposition to its customers in truth to be told just a better way than that business owner knows how to articulate it these bots they're they're so intelligent that they are remembering things from previous conversations they're they're physically building relationships throughout the process of either answering questions or booking appointments or providing available times for booking events you name it and if the bot is unable to answer in a way that the business owner would, you can retrain it. You can hit the thumbs up, you can hit the thumbs down on the response, and you can rewrite what the response should have been for the next time so it does answer things more accurately and correctly going forward. Why don't you give that example, that real life example you gave me about um, uh, the puppy there? Yeah, we, we just set up a bot this morning for a dog groomer here in Calgary. And uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, because um, people love their dogs. I do. I'm a doodle owner, little Louie, fluffy little guy. And, uh, you know, I go in for uh, grooms uh, with, with him. I drop him off and, you know, we love our dogs, right? So um, we uh, were setting up her bot and I was, you know, kind of pretending like I was the customer. I was teaching this bot. I was training it. And we had a bit of a, a jump start because when we set up a bot, we have it crawl the client's website that learns all about their business. And um, so this bot already knew kind of uh, the pricing for the different grooms. So we were testing the bot, asking it, hey, how much does it cost? I have a doodle. What, is that, what does that cost? And the fascinating thing is that it started saying, okay, for like a regular cut, it's as low as 55 bucks. We've got a kennel cut for 65 and if you want them to be looking amazing, we've got a teddy bear cut for 85. So this bot started upselling this contact when we were doing some testing on it before going live with it. And it was so fascinating because it was something that, um, you know, every business owner knows they need to do, but sometimes they're a little bit uh, timid to go and ask for the extra dollar. And this bot just thought of that right away. So I thought that was the coolest thing. Well, what, what that made me think about is uh, we've, in our short tenure that we've known each other, because it's been a, a while, but not years and years, um, part of uh, building the sales process for your company, right? Uh, what you sell, uh, how you sell it, and to whom you sell it to, like the extraordinary lead. And I remember uh, one of the things that um, came to mind is that documenting your sales process right down to the millionth degree 
and putting down any conversation pieces or information in there, it, it's painful to, for, for what? It, it, it'll take for small business, it'll take you what? On the sales process, not the delivery process. It'll take you two, three hours, maybe once. Yeah. And then you teach it to the bot. And I think that this is where I'm getting more appreciation in this application, not e platform, just in the application of AI sales chat. It makes the recipient of your messaging uh, get tortured less because today I might be feeling really, really happy. Uh, tomorrow, maybe not as much. I'm going to be really rushed. I didn't get a good feeling about Chris Eater, gave me body language. The bot doesn't care. It's just going to say, and by the way, you know, this will increase your uh, lead generation by 4%. And it's not like maybe it'll do it. You change the tonality, tempo, and rhythm on the chats. And I think it, it allows clients or prospects to get less tortured um, because it just follows a human script, right? And that's what I found quite amazing about, uh, you know, your application and the detail you take in putting in a real conversation relative to the sales process. Now, if you're talking to your, one of your prospects and say, hey, Chris, I'm in, how vital is it for you to know what you're selling, how you're selling it, like the process? Uh, how vital is that? It's the utmost vital because it's so important to know what you're selling. And it's funny because a lot of business owners don't truly know exactly what it is they're selling or at least how to articulate the solution that it provides in an efficient manner. And the chatbots, when you give it, you know, information from like a sales kit or some kind of a proven process that you documented the stages of that process, the bot takes it, you you upload it in a document into the bot, it learns from it, it correlates data from the website that it's crawled, the custom frequently asked questions that it's put into it. So the more information that you give to it, the better that it performs. And having um, you know that sales process and the ability to address any concerns or objections right then and there, immediately, so impactful, so important for any business. And you're pre you're pretty uh, you're pretty in tune of what you're selling, but have you recently lost a bet uh, um, for about four thousand dollars? Not getting exactly correct. I can't remember if you tell me that or not. <laughs> No, I don't think so. But uh, <laughs> there was a course that I took recently that you were trying to get 10 out of 10s for all the participants. And uh, I think you did. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. And, and you know what? I got to tell you, take the mystery out of it. I really thought that you might be the one that cracks the code. Uh, but it is literally impossible. That's one of those things that it is literally impossible to have a company of one, two, three, or three million to be on the exact same page, at least in the sales process, uh, or what you're selling, what your features are. And it really opened my eyes years ago. And um, you, the way that you're showing me on how your gadgetry, let's call it gadgetry, uh, really drills down and it will take you time. It's like training a little puppy, right? Once you train that puppy to, you know, sit, give your hand, I mean, that'll take, I don't know how, I can't remember last time I trained a puppy, but, you know, that'll take you 300 reps. With the AI bot, it'll take you two reps maybe, but you're going to get it right. And it's it's very exciting um, on that. Uh, how do they get in touch with you at ePlatform? Because I strongly, hey, listen, I'm a client. So, uh, and that's not really, if we remember, I want to make sure that my, our viewers, uh my mom included um you know they realize that i'm just shamelessly promoting people i use the first time we attempted this our video kind of was crap right so i was interviewing on this even before uh we started using your your uh, platform so um i got really excited after i met you about looking at it and it blew me away really did uh how do they get in touch with you how do they get started yeah. The uh, best way, head over to eplatform.ca and do a live demo. Chat with our bot on our website. Um, you're going to learn a lot about how uh, our process works by answering questions. You can feel free to try and break the bot if you want to, but I've trained the heck out of it. And, you know, you'll learn on that website too that um, there is um, 
ways to grow your business uh, that don't have to break the bank. And these chatbots are one of them. AI is becoming way more accessible to small businesses nowadays. And the best part, Bruno, with our bot, when you have people coming to our website, you can get these things for less than a hundred bucks that are going to be your full-time, anytime, 24-7 employee doesn't sleep, doesn't eat, it continually learns, and it responds instantly to customers with the objective of qualifying and booking appointments. So, yeah, if anyone wants to get a hold of us and learn more about that, head to eplatform.ca, do a live demo chat with our bot, and it's going to go ahead and book you in to my calendar so we can ha- see how it fits into their into their business. And And listen, I was in the human capital business for years, many, many years. The one thing that used to catch me thinking, I'm like, okay, these bots are going to replace, and I'm not, I'm just talking about this application, not, you know, how to build cars and stuff like that. I don't know if it's going to eliminate jobs, it probably will. But you know what I found with this function, if you're streamlining sales and tech, first of all, the people out there right now using uh, the gadgetry, like, you know, cell phones and whatever, they don't call. They expect that answer right now, number one. Number two, even if you hired 50 people to do this, 50 inconsistent answers that are going to make everybody frustrated, right? So all those 50 people will probably get fired for not effectively (laughs) ringing them through the the sales funnel. If you train your people right, okay, and again, we were talking about the sales training. If you train them exactly what to say once it comes through the funnel to the end, you can hire 20 people more to make sure they qualify for your program. So I become a really big fan of the pre-screening because that's what people do now anyways, like it or not. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important to note that like AI is not out there to replace jobs. It's there to supplement the efficiencies and the high performers. What it's doing is it's kind of taking the tedious, mundane, you know, tasks when it comes to communication in regards to following up with leads and, tracking people down that were previously interested in an offer and it's just making their day more efficient so that the bot does that for them. It books in sales calls for them so that they can do their job the best by doing what they know most about is closing deals and guiding people towards a particular solution to their problems. So the bot's doing a lot of the heavy lifting for them and it's getting those right people uh, on the phone with them just in a way more efficient manner. What I really enjoyed about working with you, uh, Chris, is that I think you follow the bot model, right? And I mean that in a very nice way because you made it very clear you don't want to work with everybody, right? And allowing the people to go through a very quick way of getting pre-screened, you're actually pre-screening them. Once they come out, then you have a better opportunity to say yes or no to the to the prospect. What, what do you What do you tell people, I guess, that may come to you or other agencies and say, I just want as many leads as I can. What does that tell you? Um, I mean, it tells me that they're kind of speaking to everybody and they don't exactly know the types of people that they're ideally needing to speak to. Um, It kind of comes in the whole equation of uh, quality over quantity, right? Mm -hmm. So if if their if their if their quantity is just super high, their their team is going to be maxed out, stressed. Working with all sorts of people never really um, solves the biggest problem, which is having the AAA clients that just ultimately love what you do and the ones that you know how to serve best. So the yeah the bot's great at kind of sifting through those people and making sure that the right ones are are attended to quickest. And and I want to, you know, almost shamelessly endorse you is because, yeah, everybody's going to think, oh, Chris and ePlatform, you're always dealing with bots and this and that and the other thing. I'm going to tell you right now, um, I, th- I think after you get through the screening process, which I think is fair because nobody knows each other, your hands-on approach is second, second to none. Like, and you don't even have to answer that, but your customer service is like killer good. And you're very proud of your work. And um, they should be really, people should be really happy about working with you because it has been, you know, you got, you're really, really, really hands-on. So um, now we get to the hard part, no bots required. So turn off your bot, ready? Uh, We call this rapid fire, holy moly. 
Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay. I'm 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 worried about you because you rely so much on this uh, <laughs> learned uh, you know learned technology. Favorite food? Favorite food? Um, hot bowl of soup. Pho is my number Ooh, one. Nice. Um, what is your favorite? Do you have a favorite restaurant either here or another city? Uh, I, so I, I like the one close by my place, Fohan Pasture. Um, that one is uh, that one's my number one. You know, you say fa, right? Fa, yeah. Fa, fa bun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you want the reference to that, you might want to watch Russell Peters what he says to oh, somebody yeah. who directs him. Oh, fuck lie. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, uh, favorite movie. Uh, favorite movie. Um, I, I love the Lord of the Rings franchise. Um, okay. and uh, I just I love a good adventure. So then putting that onto the screen, uh, that's my favorite. Um, favorite actor uh favorite actor again a franchise guy i love the james bond franchise um let's go with uh pierce brosnan he was my favorite bond are you young enough are you old enough to remember yeah i am believe it or not yeah i am he was one of my idols childhood idols wow that's <laughs> cool okay favorite band. My life. <laughs> okay favorite band that uh has played live because i know who your favorite band is for sure. Um, you know what? My uh like I, I I'm you have so a t-shirt. diverse with that man. Like uh I love the hip hop scene, um, electric dance music scene. Um my the funnest one that I've ever been to um that I really love was Nas. Okay, favorite song. Favorite song. Um when I have to go with a bit of a hybrid there, Namin, Damien Marley, a feature okay. with Nas. Okay, um, where where have you traveled to that is your favorite up to now? My favorite um, would be starting tropical uh, Dominican Republic, Punta Cana. Oh, nice! I've never been there. I heard it's, it's pretty amazing. cool. It's a lot amazing. of good baseball, that's for sure. Uh, where would you like to visit that you've never been to? Um, you know what? I'm a sink my feet in the sand kind of guy. So next up, I gotta say probably the Bahamas. You know what? There's nothing in the world like the beach. I know, right? I, you know what? Um, spending some time down south, I have some friends that kind of go, you know, we're not beach people. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, you know, and it's not opposite. People think, well, I'm more of a mountain skier. You know. Okay, it doesn't have to be that way. Like, how can you not like going to the beach? You, I, I don't both, understand man. that. You both. I've I've went the first time I went to the Dominican, which was the other side, the Atlantic side, Puerto Plata. Um, I went for a, a trip there, and then when I got back the next day, I was skiing in in the Rocky Mountains. So yeah. Do both if you can, man. Like, there's only uh, <laughs> get once to live this life, right? So have fun. Yeah. With it. <laughs> okay, so. Um, did we say where you want to go? Yeah, you want to go to uh, Bahamas. Yeah, Bahamas. I would love to check out Bahamas. Yeah, being a beach guy. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think you'd be the tallest guy there. Probably. Um, yeah. How about <laughs> somebody that's still alive that you would like to meet? <clears throat> Someone who's still alive that I would like to meet. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like I meet, I meet so many. Like I, hmm. anybody in the world. Anybody in the world. Someone who would like to meet. Oh man, this one I'm drawing a blank on. I don't know why. How about how about uh, Lorem Ipsum? Um, our favorite pig Latin artist on our landing yeah. page design team. Yes. <laughs> Lorem, is it a guy or a girl? You think? Yeah, I don't know. Probably a probably a girl. Okay, so you'd like to meet Lorem. Uh, somebody who's uh, unfortunately passed away all time that you would like to meet. Uh, you would have liked to meet someone who's passed away that I'd like to. Uh, mm. um, man, I don't know why these types of questions. I don't have my bot, Bruno. I, I know. I was going to say, I plug it think, in. I have to think. <laughs> yeah. Someone who's passed away. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh tim cook <laughs> or no um steve steve jobs steve jobs uh he's the biggest nerd in my life that i would like to have met if he's still alive what would you ask him um i would like to ask uh steve jobs if he had 
one tip in business, what would that tip be? Okay. What do you think he'd say? What would I, what would I think he'd say? Um, oh man, that's, that's a tough one. You know what? I think that, uh, I think that he'd say is just give the customer the best experience you can. That's okay. What um, what's your favorite sport? I, I know you're not a football guy. You could pass for a football guy for sure. Um, well, I mean, Hey, if you call it, you know, being a gym rat, a uh, sport and lifting weights. I mean, yeah, the competitive uh, weightlifting, I'm sure that's a sport, you know. Let's pick that one. How about uh, favorite athlete? Do you have a favorite athlete? Nope. I don't. You don't have a favorite def athlete? Def I, de I definitely don't. I, I'd be lying to say if I did. I don't, uh, not like you, Bruno, with the sports jerseys behind me. The Those are my a... kids. Those are my kids. They're not mine. I'm not that full of myself. <laughs> but uh, a little gift they gave me, which is pretty funny, which is polar opposite. One one, one of my sons is a diehard Red Sox fan. The other guy is a Yankees fan. I'm a Yankees fan too. But um, okay, you get to ask me one question. Oh, I have another question for you. Uh, how much is your max bench press of all time? Because people will know this. You're a big boy. Oof. Yeah. Um, you know what? I... I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> uh, my chest was never, uh, never the strongest. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm more of a stronger on the, the lower half of my body here. But if I have to, if I have to pull out a calculator here, that's when things are getting really, really greasy here with the amount of weight. Uh, 400 pounds plus in the back squat. So, so how much overall. more have you bench pressed max than I have? Um, I would have no idea, but I'm going to assume 400 plus. Okay. So that's <laughs> <laughs> bench is not my forte. When I found out how much you benched, I'm like, oh my God, we got to do this virtual just in case you beat me up. Um, okay. You get to ask me one question. What's it going to be? Um, uh, I'll give you the same question that I would have had for Steve jobs. What's your number one tip in business, Bruno? My number one, uh, if I were Steve jobs. Um, if you are yourself, if you're Bruno, what is Bruno's oh. number one tip in business? Number one. Um, I would actually, the number one is make sure you have the client you want, not just the client. Um, it's just not worth your time to get a client that doesn't respect you. Uh, once you get a real good, you know, 50, 50 in it to win it client. You just, I don't know what it is. I mean, it took me a while to figure that out because you just chase leads all the time and kind of go, oh, I think I landed this one and we'll make this kind of money and you're just never happy, right? Um, I know it's kind of a silly answer, but I think after a while, you figure out if you only have 10 crazy good clients and you can charge, you know, as much as you have to charge them and they're making money, I don't know why you would go after other clients. Do you know what I mean? So um, I think that's my number one tip is not just get a client, get the client you really want and, and just really do the best you can. And I'm not saying just money. It's just also like you got to really like what you're doing. And if I can clarify that, that's a really good question. That was tough. But um, tell you what, like I've been doing stuff for a long time since I was a real young kid in family business and all that. And, you know, just recently I've been you know, the last four years when we started this Megapix journey, it's just like, I just look, I mean, <laughs> take, you know, you were, you're waiting for us and you could hear everything in my office and I get a call from my partner. I go, I got to pick this up, you know, like, and then, uh, you know, the other people show up and they're all part of it. And, you know, uh, I don't know, like, I just really love working with people that want to work together. And I think that's the number one thing is make sure before you engage with a client, that you really want to work with them because it's a life goes by fast. So I, I think that's my biggest tip because if I look back at probably where we were profitable, you remember those, in my case, 10, 20 clients, you know, over the years that you would do anything for and they never gave you a hard time about paying, right? I think my key takeaway from that is, you know, make sure you love what you do and do it for the people that make you happy because then you're going to love it even more. I say put that in your bot and smoke it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs>
Chris, you always laugh at my stupid jokes. That's why I love it with you. That's why I look up to you. No, I just look up to you because you're like six eight. But uh, you know what? This was this was an absolutely great time. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about ideas. I love your energy. I love your platform. I got to be telling you, I love the gadgetry, and um, I, I just really, I really enjoy, you know, talking to you because you're so open uh, to listening to morons like me and making sense of it. And I think, I think shamelessly promoting my partners but i tell you what you know i think people should give you a shot if they're in the business i'd like i want to i want to ask you one more question so you can clarify they can get in touch with you at eplatform.com down here is it dot ca eplatform.ca yeah dot ca tell them exact exactly uh what type of client you're looking for because it caught me by surprise a little bit you you don't work with everybody notwithstanding you want to work with everybody you know what i'm saying yeah, I don't work with uh, everyone. That's right. Um, I I love working with uh, service based businesses that have local clients, and we work with a lot of home service businesses, personal service businesses, and a lot of coaches and consultants as well too. Um, you know, for example, the dog groomer. We love working with dog groomers because it's um it, it's uh it, it's something that everyone understands what it is. And when you can run like a Facebook ad to an offer for a discount off of dog grooming, they just work so well because people understand that they grasp the concept of it and having the right gadgetry that kind of follows that type of a campaign, they mm -hmm. just work so well. And those types of clients, um, they're just so appreciative of the results, the feedback's so positive. And um, yeah, I would love to have more, more types of clients like that. Home services, you know, we're talking like painters, we work with HVAC companies, uh, plumbers of that nature, a lot of landscapers as well too. Trainers, coaches. Trainers and coaches, yeah. So we work with a lot of business coaches. Some personal coaches, um, if they have like a, a custom program or service, uh, you know, definitely they they need a sales kit. They need some better processes to learn what they sell before they come on with us. Because we're not, um, if, uh, if they have a program that doesn't have a proven offer. They haven't um, been able to make something um, grow or even really start considering the scalability factor of their products or programs. It's tough for us, right? But yeah. if it's a coach or consultant that has done that groundwork, um, they're a really great fit for us to be able to have those um, kind of assets going towards and to doing marketing for them. That's awesome. And, and we want to thank you from, uh, you know, on behalf of YYC Calgary Business Megapix is that the last couple of Power Network Group events with uh, with your e-platform, it's, it's been uh, it's been game changing. That's for sure. Yeah, the automation makes the team work smarter, not harder, and everyone's happier at the end of the day because of it. And it's been a pleasure yeah. working with you guys on that project. Well, Chris, you know what? Always a pleasure. Everybody out there who's watching, please get in touch with Chris. And Chris, we're going to be on here you know, a lot more often, maybe give for a few more tips because that was a great one on the on the beginning. So thanks again, Chris. Thanks, Bruno. Take care.